Good morning. Uh, the Wellness Committee is sponsoring this event, and we've asked uh, Matt and Anthony Sinelli to come and do an educational event. This is not a marketing event, but an educational event. We're not endorsing them, fine gentlemen that they are, but uh, they're here to provide all of us with information, respond to your questions, and, uh, and go from there. Okay? We're clear? Yeah, thank you, Jim. And thank you for all coming and joining us today and taking your time. Um, hopefully today we'll be able to discuss some of the fundamentals of Medicare, but also provide some insight and some information that you can use that will benefit you when making healthcare-related decisions for yourself, especially with the annual enrollment period quickly approaching. Um, there's a lot of marketing. There's a lot of stuff that could be coming your way. And we can give you a little bit of information that will help you organize some of those details and help you make the right decision. So who are we? We are brokers. Uh, I'm Anthony Sinelli, and this is my father, Matt Sinelli. And we represent Sinelli Insurance. Uh, it's a company that has been serving Medicare beneficiaries for 20 years. So um, experience... Um, we've, we've seen it and heard it all. So today's presentation, once we get a chance to go through some of the fundamentals, we're also going to carve out a nice amount of time for you to ask questions and have some one-on-one -on -one discussion about some of the specific things that you might be seeing. Some of you actually that live here may be our clients. <laughs> yeah, does our name ring a bell? Yeah, I know, I, I know. How many people live at the Verizon, our Horizon House? About 500. About 500? Wow. Oh, yeah, I would imagine there's, if you, um, how, how many uh, folks uh, visit the Poly Clinic for their doctors? There's a few. So that's, so I, for eight years, I sat at one of the desks. Um, I actually opened up the Northgate one. And, uh, and, and um, I was down in the Seattle one here a few times, but uh, I'm a country boy, so I, I, I tried to get further up north. But uh, uh, I met a lot of people. Um, as a matter of fact, most of my clients, our clients, are actually all up and down the I-5 corridor here. Even though that we do do Arizona and Oregon, uh, we just got into Idaho. Four? Yeah, those four. Yeah, Washington, Northwest. Idaho. Yeah, so, but I was just, I was always curious to know if, if any of my current clients, because we do so much work, you know, over the phone or by email or whatever, you know, you don't get a chance to meet everybody in person. So that's why I was, if the name rings a bell, yes. Could you tell us what specifically you do? What is your business? Oh, that's a. That is a, that's an awesome question. And so after we get through some of the Medicare basics today, we're going to kind of get into the broker beneficiary relationship, some of the things that we do that might provide value or the things that you can use when talking to your broker um, as talking points or just knowing kind of what they can do for you. So hopefully can give you some of that information uh, to use moving forward. It's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, just, just for um, knowing purposes, how many people here have a Medicare supplement policy? Well, it, it's literally, we'll get into that, but it's, it's, yeah. So how many have a Medicare Advantage? About 50-50. Yeah, some of those were the same, and so... Hopefully today we'll, we'll point out those differences um, so that you can answer that question. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's out, there's a lot of words in Medicare that sound the same, a lot of letters that can become commingled. Um, and so we'll kind of go over some of those basics, try and simplify that down a little bit. So 
Uh, there's a lot of questions that you might have re related. To, yeah. I'm just wondering if you're going to cover the basics of this book that you got yesterday. Yeah, that, some some of that stuff will be part of today's presentation, yeah. But again, like we want to make sure that we give it some time to sort of talk about more of the interpersonal relationships too, um, not so much the one on one and the like going to Medicare school per se, but things that you will actually face on on an annual basis. There we go. So those questions could be things like eligibility. Uh, what Medicare covers, what Medicare doesn't cover. Um, and then also, like I had mentioned, some of that broker-client uh, relationship stuff as well. So, I mean, our, our goal, and it's, it's one of those things that um, there's a misconception, I think, but maybe not. Either way, when people think of brokers, they think of people trying to sell them something. And what I hope to instill in you today is that we're not here to sell you anything. We hope to give you the correct information that you are then able to use to make those kind of decisions related to your healthcare yourself. So just know that we hope to be a source of information and not pushing anything on you. So eligibility, Medicare, what is it and who is it for? Uh, individuals who are over 65 or individuals who have been on disability for over 24 months. Now, you can enroll in Medicare uh, in a number of ways through Social Security. That can be done in person, online, or over the phone. Um, also, for folks who are still working, you can delay your Part B benefits or enrollment into Medicare if you are on an employer plan. Now, it's important to point out that if you retire, uh, there are COBRA options that are available, but those are not considered credible coverage with Medicare. So you would not want to delay your Part B enrollment for COBRA. So. Skip the slide there. Actually, no, I didn't. OK, so original Medicare, and this came up. And we'll start to get into sort of the differences between uh, the supplements and the Advantage plants. But if we look at the basics of what is original Medicare, it's broken into two parts. And the way I like to think of it is part A is inpatient. That is inpatient hospitalization, skilled nursing facilities, hospice care, home health care. And part B, which is going to be your outpatient services. This will be primary care doctor visits, visiting a specialist, uh, outpatient hospital services, durable medical equipment, along with some drug coverage, which would be the injectables or in infusions that are done or administered in a healthcare facility. Those two pieces are what make up original Medicare. And the cost. Now, this question came to us prior to the meeting. Uh, Part B does have a Premium and the numbers on the screen are for 2023. These do adjust on an annual basis, but since we are currently in 2023, we do have the 2023 numbers here on the screen. In general, your Part A premium, $0 a month in most cases. The Part B premium for 2023, the standard premium is $164.90. Now, on the, on the chart here, if I have, yeah, on your left, my right, um, you'll see that depending on your individual or household income, there is something called IRMA, or the income-related monthly adjusted amount that could kick in. And that would cause an increase in your Part B premium. So if you're not paying the 164, but maybe you're paying... 230, 80, or, or more, that is based on your income or household income. Yeah. So, so it's actually two years. It's a, on a two year look back period. So for 2023, we would be considering 2021. 
and then 2024 is going to be this last year, 2022. So yeah, that is going to be based on a two-year look-back period. Although, if your income significantly dropped from two years ago, you can appeal that. Mm -hmm. You could go up to Social Security, there's a process of being able to appeal that. You can get that lowered. Because I know we have a lot of clients that are paying over 500 something dollars for their Part B. Yeah, use the mic. So they... Sorry. So um, those, some of those folks, you know, maybe they sold some property, um, uh, they retired or something, and, you know, but their income now doesn't reflect that. And so they can appeal and get that lowered. I've, I've heard a lot of success. So we personally can't do it. You have to do that through Social Security. So... So you've got, if you're, the way they have it broken out is if you are single filing under 97000 then your Part B premium is one sixty five ninety. If you're married filing joint, it would be, uh, I believe it's anything over 123000 would, it would go up, but anything under that is 164.90. And you can see how it goes up in the increments. And it talks about different ways of filing um, and then what the actual premium would be. So this is the, this is the folks that are making less than 97,000 or couples that are making less than 123,000 is right here. But as you can see, it goes up you know, it, and it maxes out for anybody who is over seven hundred and fifty thousand at five sixty fifty. Where people get confused is there's also another charge on top of that because a lot of brokers forget to tell the client that if you're in this range here, there's also going to be a cost related to your prescription as well. They will add an Irma tax to your prescription. So you'll pay an additional, I know this one for a fact because I have so many people on it, but the people that are paying this are paying about $76 extra a month on their prescription plan uh, as, as that's their IRMA tax, income related income adjustment. Did that answer your question? So, Another common question that we get is sort of, where does that money go? How is it used? Another one is, is why am I paying a Part B premium when I've been paying for this my whole life? And the answer to that last part is probably a little bit more complicated and something for a different meeting. But the, to answer the first two parts of that, what I can tell you is, is that you know when you pay that Part B premium, um, and you consider the funds that were coming out of your paychecks over the years, uh, those two boxes, which are here on the top, Part B Premium and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, will use those funds to then um, send to Medicare or the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid, known as CMS. And, and from Medicare, it kind of breaks it up into two avenues, and these two avenues are going to kind of be reoccurring in today's discussion, but you will have some of that go to paying uh, the fee-for-service claims under original Medicare, or they could be going to private insurance plans, uh, otherwise known as Medicare Advantage. So again, you have your Part B premiums, and then we have the Medicare taxes, they go to Medicare, and then that's where they split between paying the claims under original Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans that are going to be available based on where you live in certain service areas. Does that make sense? One, one, question. one question that always comes up is how, how, how do they get away with paying a zero or how do they get away with offering a zero premium plan? 
There's no way. Can, can you go back to that slide? Yeah. Um, and it, it's a zero premium plan to you, but these guys right here, they're sending all kinds of money to these outfits on your behalf because of the taxes that you paid. So that's, that's how they get away with offering zero premium plans. You know, again, it's for you it's a zero, but the insurance companies are probably getting anywhere from, I don't know, 500 to $1,500 a month on your behalf. It depends on where you live. It's all county specific. So if you live in King County, you know, in Washington State, that's a lot of money going to those. Yeah, and it's not, it's even if it's zero dollars a month that you're paying that insurance company, it's still the 164 or whatever your Part B premium is still being paid. It's, that's all part of that cost. So at, at the end of the day, nothing is free. So. So again, we're talking about two avenues, right? You have original Medicare, you got your A and B, and where do I go from here? And so this is where we can talk about some of the differences between you know, the supplements and the Advantage plans and how they work. So we have our A and B, and now we get to choose which way to go. And when you're getting all the marketing and the, the mail and you see the, phone, or the TV ads and, and stuff on uh, the radio, it's everywhere right now this time of year. If you think of your kitchen table and you draw a line right down the middle of it, this is, this is that avenue where you can pretty much split up all of that stuff into two categories. One of them is going to be related to Medicare supplements. The other is going to be related to Medicare Advantage. And on this chart, you can kind of see how it breaks down. So with original Medicare, you can add a Medicare supplement as well as a standalone prescription drug plan or a separate Part D plan to cover your medications. Or you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, which will combine the benefits A and B with additional benefits, things like the Part D RX and some other things that are beyond what original Medicare covers. So those are our two paths. And that's where all of that material can be pushed to either side, help you organize it, you know, because you'll say, well, I got this from United Healthcare, I got this from AARP, what is this? What's the difference? You know, if something is a supplement, go on the left, advantage, go on the right, help you organize some of that stuff. How many people have seen the Joan Namath commercial? One? That's it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe Namath has a commercial where he talks about all of the, the, you know, just like the commercials you hear, they talk about all the wonderful things that these plans have. What they're referring to is, if you go back to that yeah. back slide. So this is, these are what they're referring to. They're, they don't talk a lot about these, but most of your advertisements are about the Medicare Advantage right here. All right, so if you have a Medicare supplement policy, how does it work? Um, effectively, if you were to go to the doctor, you would be showing them your Medicare card, the red, white, and blue card. You would also be showing them your Medicare supplement or Medigap card. From there, the doctor and, or the service provider um, is gonna be paid by Medicare first, which is going to be that first 80% that Medicare covers. And then the supplement comes in, uh, depending on the plan choice, but it fills that gap, and it's gonna pay that additional 20%. So pretty simple, you have Medicare first, supplement comes in, fills the gap, um, and in, depending on the plan, in a lot of cases, works out to be 100% uh, for whatever that service may be. Now, supplement plans are sold by private insurance companies. You must have your Part A and Part B, and you must continue to pay your Part B premiums to Social Security to remain eligible. These plans are standardized, and what that means is that regardless of the letter, whether it be A, N, F, G, 
whichever one you have, the benefits of that plan are going to be exactly the same regardless of what company you get it from. So if company A offers plan A and company B offers plan A, those benefits are gonna be the same. Now, however, the price per month that you pay could be different. If you're buying a, uh, let's say you go to a, a, a car dealership and, uh, or Auto Row and there's five different Acura dealerships there and they're all selling the same car. Well, one may sell it for $5 more, one may sell it for $5 less, one may sell it for $100 more. It's the same thing, but they all seem to think that they could get away with, you know, one way or another, either making it or breaking it for a lot of the companies that offer like Plan F for over $300, which you could get it for a lot less with other companies. So, and does that make sense? And those prices will change too every year. So something that we do quite a bit um, with our clients who are on supplement plans is we, we, we track those, we monitor those, and then we are able to sort of make recommendations based on the monthly cost of whichever carrier um, that might be on a year in, year out basis. So on the screen here, we do have a list of all of the different supplement plans that are standardized, um, and it kind of does go through all the benefits. I don't know if we want to really go too deep into what this is um, plan by plan, uh, but what I would say is, you know, if we look at like plan G, which right now is one of the more commonly selected plans, um, what it's doing is it's covering your hospital co-insurance, uh, also the part A deductible, which is a $1,600 charge per occurrence, not per year, but per occurrence, um, the Medicare A and B, um, first three pints of blood, uh, preventative care, um, along with uh, excess charges and some additional foreign travel. Now, with, with Plan G, it's important to note that it does not cover the uh, Part B deductible. Um, for 2023, that Part B deductible, that is a once a year or annual deductible, so different than Part A. Um, and that deductible, kind of like our Part B premiums, we do see that sort of fluctuate and change each year. So, so what Anthony is saying is, is on the part A on the hospital, if you go in for any surgical procedures, it's 100% covered on plan G, on plan N, and plan F for those that still have F. But, but that's what this means here. These check boxes mean that, oh, there's F. It means that all of your, anything that's under your part A hospital you've got 100% coverage, Yeah, and except for these two. One thing to note about, well, both C and F plan, C and F, um, for individuals who turn 65 after January 1st of 2020, you are, no, you are not eligible to enroll in that policy. If you turned 65 prior to January 1st of 2020, you can still make selections uh, with plan C and F if those plans are available through companies in our in your area. Yeah, go ahead. Are you going to give us this chart filled in with the names of the companies? No, no, we can't. We can't do that today. Uh, how do we get that kind of information? Phone each one. No, no, no please no. Um, no, that is something. Actually, if you wanted to take our card today, we I'd be more than happy to talk to you about especially coming up with the annual enrollment period. Yeah, because there's, like I said, the plans are the same, but there is definitely cost differences from the different companies for the various plans, yeah. Do they talk supplement? Do they have, I don't know if they have in the, the rates. The book that, yeah, there's information in there on that. On rates? I believe so, for yeah. supplements? Yeah, the, the Medicare and you, where is that? Yeah, I believe it's in there. Yeah. Let me see it. The other thing to note, too, is, is that Thank you. I'll look real quick. like on an Advantage plan, rates will change January 1st. On supplement plans, 
they actually depend on the carrier. So some carriers will actually adjust their rates in April. Others might do it in September. Others might do it in January. So it, it's a it's kind of a little jungle gym exercise keeping up with some of the different prices that are coming about each year because with supplements, they don't all happen on the same day. They happen throughout the year depending on the company. Oh, and then the other... The other important thing to note about supplements, um, and this, this is one thing that most people will find uh, either helpful or useful as far as information goes, is that they are non-network plans. And what I mean by that is they, don't, they are not limited to a service area or a network of contracted providers. A supplement policy used alongside Original Medicare is accepted anywhere nationwide by doctors who accept, or hospitals who accept Medicare. So does that make sense? If, if you take your supplement to Chicago, New York, Arizona, California, any doctors in those areas who accept Medicare will also accept your supplement as coverage. And I guess the last point on that, and we'll refer back to the drugs later in the, in the talk, but uh, supplement plans do not have embedded uh, prescription drug coverage, meaning they do not include any RX coverage that is something that you purchase separately from that supplement policy. So when you sum it up and you think about um, if you have a supplement, what it looks like is you have your original Medicare, you have your supplement, and you have your prescription drug. So it's three different cards. Now, as we move into Medicare Advantage, also known as Part C, I'm not finding it. No, it says Part C on the Medicare supplement is not I think it's because it changes so irregularly through the year. So it's hard to put that in a book when you give that book to somebody and then a month later, two months later, one company changes their rates. It, so. Yes, and those will be updated on Medicare.gov as those changes occur. Honestly, um, the easiest way, be because unless you're doing this full time, the only way you're going to know when the prices change is if you discuss it with your broker. Because the, like Anthony said, the pricing on the Medicare supplements, they are, uh, the months that he said, they are April, they are July, they are one's June, January, and yeah, so what that means is, is let's say you're on uh, uh, Plan F on Company A, and their pricing is $250 for uh, their Plan F, and you see a Plan F with Company B, that's $230 or $220 was significant less. Well, you want to you want to move over to that and save yourself 30 or 40 bucks a month, which for some people that's a lot. Well, then come July when that particular plan has its renewal, all of a sudden that goes up to 270 bucks. So, it doesn't look like as good of a deal as it was before. So that's why it's good to discuss it with your broker about um, you know, the, like, like our, our clients, our Medicare supplement clients, we have about 1,500 folks that are on Medicare. And those clients that are on Medicare supplements, we're constantly shopping their plans to make sure that they're on the best plan priced for them, whether they're individual or they're married and we're getting them the spousal discount. Yes. Go ahead. Just yeah. No, so that's, a, that's actually on my list of things to talk about with the broker in the client relationship afterwards. Quickest answer I can give you, though, right off the bat is you pay us nothing. So the insurance companies are the ones who pay us, yeah, when we sell a policy. As, as a beneficiary or a member or a client, you, you should never pay a broker a fee. In fact, I don't, it's not even legal. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, so. 
And, and also, um, it's, it's, as I was mentioning to Jim and Barry, the pricing that the brokers get, that we get, we can't favor one company over another. Company A, B, C, and D will pay us within 2 or $3 the exact same amount as also D, E, and F. All those companies, they will not, that doesn't vary. And they can't offer us trips. They can't, uh, it's unethical to, for, for any broker to, to favor one company. We give the client whatever the best rate is based off of what they're looking for. That's how it's supposed to be. Advantage as well. You cannot, we get the exact same amount on Medicare Advantage. We can't favor one company over the other. I want to kind of cruise through the Advantage and the Part D stuff because there are some great questions like that that we want to reserve some time for today. Um, but, it, but essentially on the flip side of the supplement, we do have Advantage plans. Now this is the other half of that table, or the other avenue that we can split these two routes into. And what that's doing is combining your A and your B and most times your Part D into one policy. This is not, and they, uh, this phrase comes up a lot, it's, people say, oh, it's a Medicare replacement plan. It's not quite a replacement plan because your Medicare doesn't go away. You still have your Part A, your Part B, and you must continue to pay your Part B premiums. But what it does is it's going to pay Medicare costs instead of Medicare, because it has already been prepaid by Medicare to be in your area. In other words, when you go to the doctor, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you're giving them your Medicare Advantage card. You're not giving them your Medicare card. You're giving them the, uh, uh, the, the Johnson plan, let's call it. Um, you're giving them the Johnson plan card and they take care of the billing. Your Medicare card just sits in your wallet. But if you're on a Medicare supplement, because the billing is different, they bill Medicare first, you give them your, their, your Medicare card, and then you give them your supplement as, they, as the back end, where it picks up that extra cost, that, that it fills the gap. Does that make sense? So it's a, it's a, so it's a, it's a Diff it's a way of billing. So it, when you go to the doctor and you're on a Medicare Advantage, you just give them your insurance card. That's it. And on your insurance card, if it says Dr. Copay is zero, you pay zero. Whereas if you're on a supplement, you won't have uh, uh, any copays or anything because on, on a, in a particular case, they will bill Medicare first and then what's left will go to the supplement. And if you're on plan C, F, G, N, most of the time you won't have any copay at all. But, but a billing process takes place before you find out how much is, is, is left over for you to pay. And again, in most cases on a Medicare supplement, it's zero. So with the Advantage plans, unlike the supplements where you have the letters. On the Advantage, we have things that you might have heard like HMO, or Health Maintenance Organization. What is an HMO? Well, basically, it's, um, it's more of a gatekeeper style policy where, where you have an in-network group of contracted providers and you have a primary care doctor who sort of facilitates or gatekeeps the healthcare. And a lot of times, most plans require on an HMO that you get a PCP or a primary care doctor referral to see a specialist. Counter to that, we have the PPO plans. So preferred provider organization. Now these will have a group of in-network contracted providers, but also allow members to go outside of that group of in-network doctors at usually a higher cost share. Also, on a PPO, the primary care PCP referrals are not required. So a little bit more flexibility um, and range in where that plan can be used. A sort of hybrid policy is the HMO 
POS or point of service policy, kind of like an HMO, uses the in-network provider group, but in a uh, situation where a member wants to go outside the network for certain services, they can, but with a PCP referral. So mostly in-network, but allowing some flexibility outside the network with a referral. You could not self-refer in this situation out of the network on an HMO POS. The insurance company would likely not cover that event. And then we have our special needs plans, and these are for qualifying chronic illnesses or Medicaid beneficiaries or those uh, institutional inpatient. Um, so specific plans to meet specific needs. Uh, Kaiser is a, is a uh, clear-cut HMO. So with, with Kaiser, generally speaking, and, there, and I mean, I can speak to some of the, the variances depending on where you're buying a Kaiser plan, um, but they're basically accepted at Kaiser facilities. And that's it. They don't contract with, you know, Evergreen, Overlake, Swedish, that for the most part in general. In certain areas, they have a little bit of flexibility because they don't have a large number of providers in those areas, but they do have a plan. But I would say specifically in King County, Kaiser, use it at Kaiser. Kaiser is, is a straight HMO like the old group health. Yeah. You can only go to Kaiser. That's it. So that if you're on Kaiser, their doctors, their networks, their, their specialists, their facilities, nowhere else. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, I, I have a lot of clients on Kaiser, and they, you know, the, a lot of clients love them. Yeah. I can go back. It's the same. It's the same as I discussed earlier. It's a Medicare Advantage, so the billing is they pay the insurance company first. Medicare does. Medicare does. Yeah, so when the, when the uh, well, actually, when you're on a PPO, on your card, if you're going to a doctor and it shows a copay of $5, let's say, when you go to that doctor, you pay the provider $5. And then the provider is going to send the bill to the plan based off of the contract that they have. Does that make sense? Yes. If you're not on Kaiser, if, if you're not I think the easiest way to answer that is, um, well, if you have a broker, you can see if they know anybody that is of, of, of good standing that you've heard good things about. But, you know, really, th the only way that you could research a doctor is if the individual goes and meets them in person and tries to r develop a rapport. And that's even if it's possible, if they'll even let you do that. Um, but it's hard to know just because because we can't we can't recommend any providers we can't um, we can only explain who they are and and maybe what they do like like we know that Swedish takes a lot of different insurance plans we know that Virginia Mason takes a lot of different insurance plans we can't really elaborate beyond that and we can't give our opinion because it's illegal but to do research for specialists it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing yeah, or it could be something a, a doctor or a primary care doctor might have knowledge or information of one of their colleagues who specializes in X, Y, and Z. Those kind of things, usually it, they will come almost straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. I, I've had a number of surgeries done on myself, and I know like for, because of that, um, uh, I, I had a lot of the doctors were from... Um, uh, ProLiance, 
Have you ever heard of Pro Alliance? So I, 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 I feel comfortable if my primary care doctor tells me that I have to go uh, see a Pro Alliance specialist because they've done work on me in the past. And if anybody was going to ask me, hey, Matt, what, what, who do you like that does operations, you know, that kind of a thing, I would say, you know, I've had great luck with Pro Alliance. So, how are we doing on time? So okay. with, the, uh, with the plan structures, um, on a Medicare Advantage plan, we've kind of touched on this a little bit, uh, but, a, but a big difference between this and like a supplement is that you're going to see things like co-pays or co-insurances for various services. Yeah, you might have a zero premium plan, but you know, when you go see your specialist, you might have a 20 to $45 copay. Um, if you're in a hospital or have a surgery, uh, there could be a copay or pre-contracted co-insurance amount that you will be paying for that plan. Um, there's not the event where the Medicare Advantage plan fills that gap or covers it up to 100%. It's always going to be listed out kind of in the summary of benefits line by line. Um, there's also things like the drug coverage, which will likely be included on most plans, as well as other benefits beyond what original Medicare covers. So things like hearing, dental, vision, fitness, meals, transportation. There's a whole list of things that might be included on a Medicare Advantage plan that a member could use or not use, depending on what they're looking for. But there are things that they're going to be considering when shopping for these plans. So they're not standardized. There, there's differences, lots of differences between each company and each plan. You know, and so what we're looking at, especially as brokers every, every year, is what's the premium for this plan or that plan? What's the annual maximum out of pocket? It's a very important kind of number or part of a plan to be aware of because what the maximum out of pocket is, is the max that you would spend per year on medical expenses before the plan covers it at 100%. So if the maximum out of pocket is $6,400 or $6,400 for the year, you know that once you've spent that much on various medical expenses, the plan's going to then pay everything at 100%. We'll be looking at things, another thing that we do probably spend maybe half, if not more, of our time on is the prescription drug benefits for these plans. So each company will have a different list or different tier for each medication, and there will be a significant amount of cost differences between those plans. So part of our value prop and what we, we, we really do spend a lot of time on our clients is going over the annual changes in the drug uh, coverages from the plans as well as those costs because that could be the difference of saving, you know, $100 to $2,000 per year depending on who you are and what medications you might be taking. Um, anything else on MA before I jump into the D? No, I want to get into the question. Yeah. Sure. So I think this stuff, so back, go back. Sure. Correct. On a on a HMO is in network. On a PPO, you have both in and out. Right. And really, a maximum amount of pocket. It just means that the amount of money that's coming out of your pocket stops at a certain point, so you don't go bankrupt. So it, it's good. It protects you. This protects you from massive amount of expenses. If you have a plan that says your maximum out of pocket is $6,300. That means that any of your co-pays on your medical, any of your co-insurances on your medical, that all adds up, and if it reaches that number, then the insurance company will pay 100% for the rest of the year. The only thing that's not included in that is gonna be the prescription. The co-pays on that is not included. That's a whole different ball game. The co-pays the co on the prescription 
are not included in the maximum out of pocket for medical. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Is the donut hole going away? Is who? The donut hole. That's a great question. And you know what? They said it was, but what they did was is the they don't want us to reference it as donut hole anymore. It's called the coverage gap now. So uh, but the bottom line is, is if you, if you reach, which is the third phase of the drug plan, meaning you have your deductible period, where if you have to satisfy the deductible, you have your initial period, which means that you've satisfied the deductible, so now you just have co-pays, and then there's the coverage gap. When you fall into the coverage gap, it's still 25% of whatever the the retail value of the uh, and the discount is on the drug, and then of course the fourth phase is they cover ninety five percent. Oh, there well, you go. Lo and behold, look what we got here. So, so the deductible level um, next year that deductible is going up to five thirty five. Yeah, five fifty. Yeah, it's going up there. It's going up to at least five thirty five. I know that. But it's, it's not on every plan. Not every plan is 535. Uh, some of the plans, it's a little bit lower. Um, but a lot of them, yeah. I mean, it's on, the, on the separate Part D plans, that deductible is going up to 535. Medicare Advantage plans, they tend to keep the Medicare Part D deductible a lot lower. Um, you know, anywhere from, it could be 125, zero, it could be, I think, I think 220 is the most I've seen on a Medicare Advantage plan that's had a Part D deductible, but, um, but it's still there and it keeps going up. Your initial coverage limit, that's just your straight copay. So if you're taking, let's say, uh, uh, Metropolo, uh, or however you pronounce that one, I take it, I can't pronounce it, but... Um, if, you, if you're in this initial coverage stage, you're going to probably pay either zero or uh, maybe two or three bucks, five bucks. It depends on your plan. This is that coverage gap donut hole thing. So that's the only difference is they call it the coverage gap. But it's still the same. It's not like it was back when my father was alive. The first time that they, they did a give back of some sort on the, on the donut hole. Because before, if you remember right, if you fell into the donut hole, you were responsible for 100% of the cost of those drugs, which was brutal. So the first time that uh, they started to give something back, he got a check in the mail for 100 bucks, And I said, so wait a minute, Pop. You're paying... Uh, $600 for an inhaler because you're in the donut hole and they gave you back 100 That's it? I said, tear up the check. Of course, he's old school, so he kept it and <laughs> deposited it, but I'm a rebel and I thought it was kind of wrong. So now, it's, now they cover 75% of the cost, but you're responsible for 25%. But that's still a lot of money if you're getting one of those expensive, you know, Spiriva, uh, uh, what are the really expensive inhalers, you know, and the eye drops and the creams, and uh, it adds up. Right. It's, so Total the cost. way they determine it is they take the retail cost. Where is it? Yeah. So referring to the total cost of the drug. Yeah. So the, the yeah, they, re, they basically take the retail value. So let's say the retail value is $300. That's what, the, that's what the pharmacy got it for or the insurance company. And your copay 
was $50. So now $350 was just accumulated and it goes towards the different stages. So in, in Jim's case, he got, it, he got his medication and his copay, it added up in eight months to $4,660, and so he fell into the donut hole. And so there's another number that's in here. That number is, where is it? Oh, so now when, if Jim was to continue on and there was just more than three months la left, let's say, um, and he reached this number, which again is the co-pays and the retail cost added together, then if he fell into the catastrophic coverage, he would only pay no more than $10.35 for a brand, I'm assuming it's a brand, and uh, if it was a generic, $4.15 at the most. So that's what that is. Absolutely. You, no, you got it. That's right. You're right. That's how it happens. So your 1900 plus your copay added up to this number really quick. And, and honestly, every single one of my clients that's on Eloquist has the same thing happen. All of the calls that I got, 99% of the calls that I got over the summer were my clients that were asking me how they fell into the donut hole so fast. And the first question I asked was is, were you prescribed Eliquis? And they said, yeah. And I said, bingo. I so what do you recommend? Is it a no, 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 no. We can't recommend. We, we can't recommend anything. That's between you and your doctor. Unfortunately, there, there are programs available to get help. But if you're a high income earner, it, it doesn't do you any good because you won't qualify. But um, but there really isn't, uh, in, in terms of a substitute, that's between you and your doctor. Yeah, I, you, you, that's a familiar conversation that's happened several times. Uh -huh. It's a nightmare. And I've heard about their billing. I've heard about their doctors leaving. I've heard about their, uh, their service. Um, I've heard it all. And being a part of it at one time, uh, I've, I've even heard more. So. In terms of what? I don't, I don't volunteer at the polyclinic no more. I don't do that no more. I did it for eight years, and then um, I turned it over to him. I don't do the polyclinic anymore today. <laughs> so, yeah. Since they got bought out, we don't, we don't mess with it. Because United Healthcare owns the polyclinic. Op they're called Optum. And uh, they, they, have, they want their own people in there, which is sad because we were the type of people that gave the client an option, showed what was available, and, and help them make the right choice. And to their people that they have in there now, we don't know what they're doing. We, we know that they're, they're focusing on three different plans, although they would prefer everybody to be on one, which is through United Healthcare. but I didn't say that. Yeah, I mean, I think our, our role as brokers is to take, there, there are a lot of options for people in King County. So our, our goal is to sort of take those options and whittle them down, but not, not just haphazardly, but in a way that we're narrowing it down to options that really do apply to you, whether it be 
medical coverage or drug coverage or what extra benefits it is you want. And, and what we're seeing in some of these facilities is when they do limit insurance companies from coming in, they're already taking away some of those options, but maybe not as effectively as we would like to do it as brokers. So we would like to have all of them on the table still, but then be able to simplify that for you, not have a smaller batch that may or may not work kind of a thing. So that's part of that frustration um, and things that we have to combat depending on where people receive care. Um, How many slides are left? Four, but yeah. We're gonna whip through these really fast so we yeah. can answer your questions. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so. Enrollment periods. Enrollment periods, uh, I'll, I'll even do it. Um, the enrollment periods are we have can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. We have October 15th to December 7th. That's the enrollment period that's coming up right now. You can make your change. You can change your drug plan. You can change your Medicare Advantage plan. You could go from a Medicare supplement to a Medicare Advantage. That is the period that's coming up. Uh, each plan has a star rating. So they, based off of your feedback and feedback of the people around the U.S., what they do is, is they rate them based off of one through five. If you happen to get a five-star plan um, and you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, or I should say if you happen to see a five-star plan and you're on a Medicare Advantage plan outside of the enrollment period, you actually can create a special enrollment period and enroll in that five-star plan. Problem is, is we've only had one company uh, as a five-star plan two years ago, it was Kaiser. Last year, everybody was at about from three to four, four and a half. Nobody was a five. But that's what the rating is. It's, when do those come out? Uh, like the ones for this year, they'll be out probably within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, generally. I was on Medicare.gov Wasn't there? Wasn't. Yeah. We usually see them kind of either first or second week in November. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that, for the most part, that's it. So we can kind of now take questions and also talk about and, sort of. And we will go over because yeah, you know that, that's boring. Is anybody here work for the government? <laughs> we. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the other. Because I, I, I if personally, this stuff is 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 brutal. <laughs> it's just brutal because it. We have to we have to teach it, but it's just it's. It's the, same, it's the same thing you've heard over and over and over again. You, you folks want to know the nuts and bolts. You want to know what, what can we answer that's going to help you. So question away. <laughs>